Joining me now from Austin, Texas, is Rennie Gong of Texas A&M University. He's a distinguished professor of atmospheric sciences. Let's start with Tong Bo's report. I mean, Time Magazine wrote a piece back in July, very complimentary of the effort that uh, Tong Bo was just talking about. It said that what's happening in China there could be a model for land restoration efforts everywhere. Do you agree? Are there lessons to be learned from China that can be duplicated elsewhere? Yes, I think I strongly agree with this uh, statement. Uh, uh, so normally, when you deal with the environmental problems, you need uh, cons there are different strategies, uh, different approaches. But the, the key point here is that you need to consider uh, mitigation versus ad adaptation. Mitigation means you take uh, exactly orders or regulatory measure to, to minimize the impact of humans on the environment. Adaptation is more like uh, to remedy or reduce the impact of uh, uh, environmental change or climate change. Uh, the other thing you have to consider when you deal with the environmental problem is that uh, you also have to consider development versus sustainability. So what the Chinese the Chinese doing is the Chinese government is doing is actually explore a path of sustainable development. For the case of uh, uh, tai, uh, Taihangba uh, forest, uh, that's a very delicate uh, ecosystem. So you have the forest forestry, uh, biodiversity, uh, desertification, and also water resources. So what the Chinese have done is actually to create an unprecedented example to demonstrate how to create a harmony between humans and nature. It's interesting you brought up the word mitigation. I'm going to bring up another word that kind of rhymes with it, dedication, because uh, one of the things you saw in that story is just the dedication to this forest that you see generation after generation, but also what comes through with these winners uh, is dedication to the environment. Talk to me about the other award winners from China. What stands out for you? Um, there are a lot of people who working very, very hard to solve environmental problems in China. And uh, you are right. I mean, dedication is the main of the factors involves effort by generations. And uh, so it is the, the effort by those people that really have tremendous impact on to solve pollution problems in China, including air pollution, uh, soil pollution, and also water pollution. It's interesting, though, you, you look at uh, taking barren land and turning that into a forest. That's, that's a really tough task. But uh, there's diversity here as well. I mean, everything from land restoration, as we talked about, but also the creator of Mobike. Uh, it's using market-driven solutions to address air pollution and climate change. Um, so we're seeing a variety in the, uh, in the award winners, too, aren't we? Y yes. This is a very broad issues, I mean, involve societal issues, political issues, and also decision makings. And, uh, and uh, so you really have to get everything integrated and to consider how you can actually develop economic systems to systematically tackle this uh, environmental problems with air, with soil, and water. Rin Yi Jong uh, joining us from Texas. Thanks so much for your observations.